Welcome to Cult Connections. Let's see what we are taking a sideways look at today. Hello, it's uh, Ian here. They're, they're welcome back to the their Cult their Connections podcast. Um, I am really pleased to be joined by my good friend, um, this <clears throat> there, Stephen. How are you, Stephen? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm absolutely fine. Yeah. So, um, this will be a, a extra episode, as it were. So, this is following on from um, the Monday's release of the British Blood Curdling Corporation. Um, and one thing that the listeners won't know is that the myself and um, the Stephen spend a lot of time on the the vintage video uh, podcast, um, the Discord, um, their channel. And one thing that Stephen's very lovely about is that he actually listens to my um, their their episodes um, very um, very closely, and and he always gives me a lovely their sort of breakdown of them. And um, you did enjoy that one, Stephen. I did, in fact, yes. I even enjoyed the title. That was that's my favorite title so far. <laughs> the, <laughs> the British Blood Curdling Corporation. I uh-huh. like that. Well, and very much, and it, 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 it. I, I would, I did kind of think. I thought long and hard about that one because I did. I do like to come up with some, you know, quite sort of snappy, um, their titles. But the three shows actually did did reflect that because they are actually quite, um. Um, they're sort of terrifying, um, and one of them, um, their threads, uh, they to this day absolutely, you know, scares me so so much. It is just, it is horrifying. Um, so what this led on to was to talk about the um American counterpart, as it were. So, in in. The November 1983 ABC showed The Day After, um, which is about the effects of a the devastated nuclear holocaust on a small town, the residents of Eastern um, the Kansas. And it, it's actually, it's it's mostly set in um, the Lawrence. And I was, and as I was doing my, um, the research, this is a, is a is a real um um their town as well so um uh, you much like like sort of threads it wasn't it wasn't sort of made up you know this was a real um their place but um i don't think you didn't see this when it they first came out Stephen, did you no uh speaking of uh cult connections my <laughs> uh connection as a child was uh uh to the jehovah's witnesses cult and I, we, they did not allow us to see this film. Uh, there was so much publicity surrounding this movie that they probably felt obligated to have an opinion on it. Um, like if, the, the reason they didn't want us to watch it is because uh, it uh, shows the end of the world that's not their end of the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, they uh they it was a rival apocalypse and they knew for sure that the world was not going to end that way it was going to end with uh jesus and the horses and and all that stuff happening so they didn't want us to see uh this different apocalypse uh so i never i never got to see it at the time uh we um yeah there there were there were a lot of restrictions about what we were allowed to see uh i i think i was saying on the discord that they probably wouldn't have made a big deal about this movie if if it were just your average uh if it were just your average movie i don't know if they would have had a problem with uh on the beach for instance from the late 50s mm-hmm. uh, but there was so much publicity surrounding this uh it was a huge huge thing and uh so they had to they felt that they had to ban it just as they banned um bewitched uh my mom for some reason was lax about certain ones they banned the witchcraft uh, related shows 
uh, mm-hmm. especially the Smurfs. Uh, <laughs> that, that was, I, I don't know why they had a real bug about the Smurfs. And in fact, they even have um, had and maybe still have an urban legend about them. Uh, supposedly, uh, one child brought a Smurf doll into the Kingdom Hall. The Kingdom Hall is what we, uh, I shouldn't say we because I'm not part of this cult anymore. Uh, they brought he brought the uh, Smurf into the Kingdom Hall, uh, which is uh, what they call the church, and uh, or a church, and the doll came to life uh, during the meeting and started cursing God and cursing the uh, other people who were there, uh, the witnesses, and everyone screamed Jehovah at the doll uh until it uh, burst into flames and disintegrated and that's something that they actually believed happened uh so uh, so they had a lot of weird restrictions like that and uh but my mom just couldn't couldn't uh, be afraid of the smurfs for some reason but uh she, <laughs> she didn't want us watching uh she didn't want us watching this apocalyptic movie, which would have been scary no matter what context you were watching it in, no matter whether you're in a different cult or any cult at all. Uh, it's It was a very scary thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, I do just want to say um, other, other that their cults are um, they're available if, if you so wish. Um, I think you would be better just following mine there, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you have a much better call. You didn't. You didn't. You haven't told me yet that there's no movie I can't watch, so or TV show. So <laughs> I think this is a very good call. <laughs> but anyway, moving on to more serious matters. So, um, so what I've always thought about and and watching thread so 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 just to go back to that I watched it at the time so that came out in 984 um and I bought the the DVD probably about maybe 10 years ago uh so watched it again then watched it again just the other week and it was still so sort of powerful and really left me quite you know, really feeling sort of scared and quite sort of shocked and things like that. But did you get the same sense with this one, Stephen? You know, did you have that sort of hollow feeling after watching it? Um, Sort of. I, one very interesting thing that your guest said, Mark Plant is his name, right? Mm-hmm. From 100 uh, Things I Learned From Film. The, yeah. Mm-hmm. The name of his podcast. Um, it was interesting that he he thought that Threads was more effective because the day after was too big in a way, and he didn't really elaborate on that. But watching the movie, I saw what he meant. It it, um, it, it starts out with uh, with grandiose music and uh, and shots uh, sweeping over various vistas. Uh, and it just, it just feels big from the very beginning. And he said that threads, which I haven't seen yet, uh, has a more intimate feel, which I think would have helped this movie, uh, had it, had it been that way. But, uh, I'll have plenty of good things to say about this movie. Uh, Mm -hmm. but I, I think there are a lot of shortcomings as well. Well, one, one, one thing that I really picked up. So, um, my, my sort of knowledge of the um, the geography of the states has has certainly gotten better since I started the, the the podcast. However, it's still not not you know great. So so this morning I did actually have to look up exactly where sort of Kansas is. Um, yeah. I think is a good point actually. It's right in there, the middle of of of. Um, the the states itself, you know, it's slap bang in 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 the the centre. So if you're gonna get something um that could maybe they sort of appeal to a lot of a lot of folk, it's actually you know a good place to set it. You know, right in there, the yeah. middle of of the the country. But um, 
so so the state of Kansas itself is eighty two thousand square miles. Um, Britain is ninety three and a half thousand square miles. So they're sort of geographically, it's quite similar. But what kind of struck me was that so 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 the day after says that there's you know there was two ICBMs their strikes on on the state there too um britain would have had a much larger amount than that so that the actual devastation caused in in sort of britain as regards their sort of geography would actually have been worse than than the day after mm. And that's what uh, and that's what threads showed that the would would you say that the devastation was even worse uh, as threads uh, portrayed it than it was in this one? This one was really bad. This one made everything look really really bad. I would I would actually say Stephen that threads makes things seem a lot worse. Oh my gosh! Oh, that's 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 pretty bad. That's pretty bad because uh, I I just kept thinking during the second half. Uh, it, the the um, the nuclear explosion happens right smack in the middle of the film, mm-hmm. and I, in the second half, I kept thinking, but well, I would have rather have been incinerated than mm-hmm. than deal with all this. Yeah, yeah, and that's uh, that's my very thoughts is um is is that very thing. Yeah, I don't want to live live there through this. If the the bomb there drops, you know, you know they they. Today I'm not I'm not hiding away anywhere. I, I want to go. <laughs> thanks very much. So no, me um, neither. No, me neither. but um, an interesting point though, and uh, but it also got me thinking about um, the their sort of geography because what we are what what us in 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 their Britain are are aware of is actually how sort of close we are to one another. You know, we don't have huge, vast areas of, um, you know, countryside or or sort of desert or or, or anything like that. You know, we don't have vast, um, their sort of plains, and everywhere is really not that far away from each other. Um, and what I got from the day after was that, for all it was absolutely awful, and the effects are indeed terrible. That openness, as regards the um, the uh, their sort of geography, actually lends itself to there's still a little bit left afterwards. Yeah, I I was thinking that Kansas City uh, wouldn't really be a great uh, a great target for for these nuclear weapons uh now we i don't think we ever find out whether or not uh there were also hits on other cities Mm -hmm. Uh, because obviously chicago or new york maybe maybe even los angeles even though it's more spread out would have been better targets uh but we saw the uh the missiles coming from kansas city Mm-hmm. Uh, so I guess that's why they struck it because that's where we kept our missiles. Or maybe we still keep them there. I don't know. I I, uh, I don't know anything about how how that all works. Uh, but yeah, it does seem like there would have been limited damage by by using Kansas City as a target. And Kansas City, Kansas, Missouri. Uh, that um, that didn't seem to be the best target, but it was uh, it was pretty effective for the people who did get uh, who did get blown up. Though I mean, they their lives were certainly uh, destroyed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Totally. I mean, it's it's um, it is. It's a film of the two halves, and I think it probably does help to set up a lot of of the characters in the first half you know you do get to you know 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 a lot of the characters you get to sort of empathize with them um 
And there's some interesting, you know, cast cast members as well. So we've got Jason, um, the robots. He he plays the the um, the, the the doctor figure. Um, the Joe Beth Williams is uh, uh, the the nurse. We have um, Steve. The sort of Gutenberg in a, in an early role as um, yeah. Stephen um, their Klein. He's he's a young um, their student. Um, and they they're the three sort of central ones, and and many many others. It's very much a um, the ensemble sort of piece. Um, an interesting thing that you get from from sort of threads and this film is that you know the you know the characters who don't make it to the second half, isn't it? Yeah, it's and there was at least one character that I would have preferred not make it to the second half, but uh, yeah, it's 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 interesting. <laughs> It's interesting who makes it, who doesn't. Uh, it's it's interesting that John Lithgow uh, was still enough of a star to appear uh, high in the in the credits and still not get very much to do. So we it seems like we we met him kind of late, and uh, mm-hmm. it seems like we met Gutenberg kind of late too. If I'm not mistaken, some people we meet real, mm-hmm. like we meet J- Jason Robards' uh, doctor character really early, uh, John Cullum's uh, farmer character uh, really early, and I I did not find any of the characters especially compelling or interesting. Uh, I was sort of uh, in the middle about them. Uh, it, they didn't bore me, but they also didn't especially interest me. Uh, but having all that normal sort of stuff in the first hour, uh, relatable stuff, I guess, uh, to a lot of people. Uh, there's um, there's a daughter, who, for instance, who uh, who is going to get married the next day, and her her uh, fiance wants to have sex and she's, she's got to go home and get her little device to make sure that she doesn't get pregnant by him. And her, her little sister is uh, steals it and they have to fight over it. So it's, uh, <laughs> it, it's, uh, it, it's kind of, you know, normal, normal stuff. Uh, and, and then when, when in this in this completely normal setting we get the uh, we get the nuclear holocaust it's it's very effective it is indeed yeah <laughs> it's um you know it it really is a film of of sort of two sort of halves and it absolutely changes it and then you just get this sense of um this sort of desperation really um and and some very effective scenes afterwards. So, um, you know, as, as we say, there, Jason Robards is is this their surgeon, um, and so he's he's working flat out afterwards to actually try to save their people. And um, some of the hospital scenes are really quite, um, you know, they are sort of fierce, aren't, aren't they? They don't really hold back at all. No. No, and they didn't hold back on the budget either. It looked like they spent all the money that they needed to spend to make this uh, situation very real. Yeah, the second half was much more interesting than the first half. And I, I typically, for me, my favorite part of a, of a movie like this is typically the first part where we're kept in suspense about what's going to happen. Uh, in any kind of horror film or thriller film, I, I love the buildup uh, to, to the first shocking moment. A really good example of that is Psycho uh, from 1960, where there's a lot of buildup to we get to the shocking uh, shower scene in that movie. Uh, but th- this, this movie was different. I, I didn't, they, they, did, they did a good job, good enough job at, at building it up. Uh, because uh, during all these normal scenes, we get radio reports, uh, TV reports uh, coming coming through that uh, show that things are going badly in the world. Uh, but life goes on, and people 
you know, people are still going to get married and people are still going to uh, move away from their parents and all the normal things that happen. Um, but the the second half uh, showing the devastation was was much better. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Some really powerful uh, scenes in that. Like, like we say, there's a there's a magnificent shot fairly near the the end where um, it's in it's in a hall. I think as part of um, the the university that they're set in. Um, yes, I and, noticed that shot too. Yeah, uh, and it pans back, and you just see that the hall is just full of you know people lying on you know makeshift. Um, their beds and they really are, you know, they're, you know, they they're just, you know, they're waiting they they to die basically. I think, uh, you know, is 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 the the gist of it. I mean, there's uh, uh, Stephen, um, the sort of Guttenberg's character says to one of the others that you know she's going to go home soon, uh, but there's a realization in her face that actually she's not going anywhere. No, you no. Know? No, yeah. and it, it probably probably he's not going to get very far either. They they both both of these characters um, were uh, uh, were overexposed to the radiation. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but before we leave that uh, talk of the shot, I just wanted to mention that that uh, that shot was very reminiscent of a famous shot in Gone with the Wind. Where uh, Scarlet is moving among the bodies and the and the the sick and dying, and the the camera pulls back and gives us you know a, the scope of what of the horror that's happening. It was very similar to that, and uh, and very effective too. So I think that uh, if they were making a deliberate nod to Gone with the Wind, I think that was a good idea. Uh, that worked really well. Uh, but Stephen Stephen Gutenberg's character is uh, a hitchhiker who ends up near uh, the farm of a family that we've already met, and he ends up staying with them in the basement. Uh, but the the daughter of this family, the older of the two daughters, uh, goes crazy, and she she breaks out and starts uh, just just running around aimlessly on the farm. And Steve Gutenberg uh, is grateful enough that the family let him stay with them that he says, I'll go get her. Mm -hmm. uh, and he does, uh, but it takes too long. They're, they're exposed to the radiation too long. And near the end, we find out that, uh, that it's making them both very, very sick, probably her more than him. Uh, but he, he he may possibly survive, but it's like you said, it's unlikely that she will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I must admit, one of the things that I was, um, you know, really taken by is actually the effects of the their makeup. So that that the makeup effects were really really good, weren't they? Yeah, they were really good. The actress playing the older daughter, I think I wrote it down somewhere. I'll see if I can find it. Uh, she. Uh, for some reason, her her makeup job uh, at once she's sick, uh, it's really effective. But for some reason, IMDb has uh, that headshot as her main is uh, her is her main picture, oh. <laughs> which is strange. I don't know if I don't know if she claimed her own page and and chose that picture, or if somebody <laughs> chose that for her. But uh, she looks she looks pretty hideous. It's funny, she appears in, oh, what was the movie Vintage Video just review? Bloody Birthday, I think. Uh-huh. Uh, so I looked her up when uh, when I listened to the uh, Vintage Video podcast review of Bloody Birthday, and I saw that picture, and I, I figured it was from Bloody Birthday uh, because it's horrific. But no, it turns out that it's uh, from the day after, and that's her her main photo. Even she's, <laughs> she's a very beautiful young woman, uh, but not, uh, not after that makeup job. No, 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 it's uh, it's, it's so well done, but, but you're absolutely right. She looks, she looks awful in it. So, 
you know, um, yeah, please, please they change that one if, it's, if that's <laughs> up on IMDb, please do. Um, I think one of the things that makes um, a, a film like this or, or sort of thread so sort of chilling and um, effective is the fact that um, now, now me and you, Stephen, we watch a lot of, um, you know, horrors or, or sort of sci-fis and things like that with, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of very scary stuff, a lot of sort of chilling, you know, things and things that, that will really last with you. But but for me, what makes something like this so sort of frightening is that this is something that could happen. You know, it could happen, yeah. you know, the, the today. Um, it's just as relevant now as it was, you know, back in, back in you know, 1983. Um and that sense of of sort of dread, you know, that's a real threat, isn't it? Yeah, I. That's what made the movie effective for me is that even even though even though the times were different back then, uh, the like like I said, the the first hour gives us kind of normal human behavior, normal relationships. And you, it's easy to transplant that into modern times and imagine uh, nuclear devastation just disrupting our normal lives, especially uh, especially after COVID. Uh, I mean, this has been a real shock to us. It's it's uh, completely disrupted our lives, and now it's easier to even easier than before to imagine something like this happening. So yeah, it's um, it's still scary when aliens come down in a movie uh, because you know that could happen too. You never know. But uh, <laughs> this, uh, if you had to place a bet, if if someone said someone from the future said there's going to be an apocalypse, is it alien or is it a nuclear holocaust? Uh, I think we'd we'd probably bet on the nuclear holocaust, but yeah. let let's hope neither neither holocaust happens in our lifetimes mm. or anybody's lifetime. Yeah, and 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 that's the thing. What we do know is that the weapons are all still there. You know, they haven't gone away. Yes. No. Yeah. Um. No. One thing. So we were talking earlier about obviously about um um their sort of religion and 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 that and actually in many ways one of the things that 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 um you know helps to keep um the uh their sort of, you know our, our um their societies uh that they're together is actually you know going to um their sort of church as well and actually one of the most powerful scenes happens so after the bomb has sort of hit, and um, there's there's a there's a um, they sort of preacher given given a sermon, isn't there? I thought that was actually really really powerful. Yeah, in, in a burned out church, and it, that's probably realistic that people will uh, would after after something like that uh, cling to their religion uh, very hard, and I. If I were a believer, I think it would be very difficult for me not to be extremely angry at God for allowing something like this to happen. So it's interesting that uh, that they still want to believe uh, that God is good and that, that God would allow something this spectacularly evil. Um, I'm not a believer, so... It's it's it was interesting to me, and I think very believable mm -hmm. um, th that people would still gather up like this. Come to think of it, I don't know if um, I don't know if COVID. I haven't heard any statistics on this. If COVID has made uh, us more religious or less religious than before, of course, this is COVID. As horrible as it is, is not anything like what we're seeing in these uh in the in these holo uh, nuclear holocaust movies um but i don't know if uh I, I don't know if there's been an increase in religiosity 
uh, since COVID. I haven't seen any any outward evidence of it. Have you heard anything about that yourself? I don't think so. Not not in um, um, in uh, the the UK it is it is uh, you know it's you know an an interesting topic there that you should mention. I mean we we sort of chat a little bit about that, Stephen, don't we? And um, yeah, you know the UK is very much less of a um, their religious their sort of country than 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 the states is, as in you know not not as many people go there to church there isn't there isn't an influence from the church um in our um their society and our sort of structures than than what they used to be it's very very lessened um whereas i think it's still a lot more sort of prevalent in um the the states so yeah it's it seems to be less of a thing uh just judging from the TV evangelists, uh, we they don't seem to have the strong influence and presence that they did on our television screens. Uh, there's still the 700 Club, uh, which is uh, headed by Pat Robertson. That still exists. I, I don't even know. I, I guess it appears somewhere on TV. I've seen it on um, uh, I've seen it on YouTube, so I assume it's on television as well. Um, but you you said that you've never had those televangelist types in in Britain, which is which is really interesting. They used to be really really common all over the place. Uh, you may not even know about Tammy Faye Baker and Jim Baker because they were a big scandal here. Uh, they uh, they were involved in sex, drugs, stealing money. It was uh, and and. They were so obviously phony, uh, but a lot of people fell for their phoniness, uh, just as they fall for the phoniness of televangelists today. But I, it doesn't, it doesn't feel to me that it's, it's, that it's nearly the thing that it once was. Yeah. No, no, it's not really a thing at all over here, Stephen. I would, uh, yeah, that's I would, that's interesting. <laughs> I would. Um... Our versions of um, their sort of religious pro programming. So, so the BBC has a has a Sunday show um, that that's that's more like a magazine sort of show now. But what it used to be, it would be based on like a different um, their sort of church every Sunday around um, the, the the country, and it was mostly sort of sermons and people singing um, their sort of hymns. But I mean, you could guarantee that. That that whatever church they were at that week, that was the best. Um, their sort of turnout that they'd had all 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 sort of year long, you know, <laughs> you know, probably barring um, uh, uh, their sort of Christmas. What I do remember, what we used to have was um, little sort of five minute sort of shows where uh, usually sort of later at night after after the news, and there would be like a a, you would have a kindly um this sort of preacher figure sitting in in a chair and he would give a little speech about um um you know sort of Jesus and things like that but uh uh yeah that's that's long sort of gone it doesn't it's not there at all now so oh, yeah that's that's funny <laughs> very much Jane sort of times um but yeah the church the church uh, uh, scene in this is 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 really powerful because they're the preacher i think he's like he's he's like black from 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 the blast so from the bomb there blast he's you know skins all sort of burnt um but he's actually he's reading from um probably um um their sort of revelations i think about about the end of the world and and all that and it almost seemed like uh you know that almost like a pointless exercise like he was reading from something and um well well actually it's, it's not going to happen like that because it's just happened you know yeah. like this yeah and something something that would mirror revelation so much like a nuclear holocaust would uh might might well you know prove to a lot of people that revelations was correct yeah, the the actor doing the uh, the actor playing the preacher was really good. He seemed to be 
overcome by emotion. Uh, he seemed to be, um, I, I got the feeling in him that maybe he, he was trying to, it felt like he was trying to hold on to his own belief while he spoke this, um, mm-hmm. because th- this, this has emotionally devastated him as I'm sure every character in the film, uh, this, this situation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Yeah. Just really, really powerful on that one. Isn't it? Just, uh, um, one thing I did get a sense of, and you know, so obviously that the second half, half of the film's all about the, the, the devastation and, almost looking at, at sort of attempts to try to rebuild things, you know, and there's some sort of powerful scenes with um, the um, all of the farmers have, have a meeting and, and it's advised, well, you have to scrape off all of your topsoil when it's safe to do so. And, uh, I, 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 you know, and the farmers are like, well, well, how do we know when it's safe to do so? And, and where are we going to put all this, you know, soil? And, and, and you know, there's not going to be anything left underneath it. And, um, yeah, I liked how one of them said, "You know, where did you where did you hear that we have to do this from a government pamphlet?" And uh, I would hope that after a situation like this, uh, faith in the government would be at an all time low. I mean, they allowed this to happen. Uh, how are we? How are you supposed to trust the information that you're getting from the government? And if you're not getting it from the government, where are you going to get the information about this? Uh, nobody's going to have information actually, but the government, I assume, is going to, going to pretend uh, that it does. Uh, we do get to hear the president speak uh, during the movie, so we know that uh, even if, we don't know whether or not Washington, D.C. was hit, but we know that the president survived the Holocaust himself, uh, so, uh, and the, apparently the government's going to continue on, but how much can you trust it? How uh, how do you know what you really should be doing in a situation? It's all it's all theoretical. Mm-hmm. Um, the uh, the movie, in, in fact, speaking of theoretical, the movie um, makes a point of uh, one theory that I guess was prevalent at the time and maybe still is, is that if w- once a nuclear holocaust goes off, uh, all the power is going to be um, is is going to be destroyed. You know, mm-hmm. uh, not just not just you know the electrical company and and not just electricity and things like that, but even your car will stop mm-hmm. um, if uh, once this bomb blast goes on off. I think they called it EMP, mm-hmm. uh, and one of the characters you know says that it's uh, it was a theory. That this would happen, and it turned out that it, it did in the film. Um, so yeah, we, you would just be at a at a total loss as to as to what to do. And the, the farmers, you know, w- would you really wanted to? W- w- would you really want on on thin evidence to to dig up all your topsoil and 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 go to all this trouble when you don't know? how much radiation is going to be in the soil. You don't know if it's going to, if it's gone deeper and that and the removing the topsoil is going to be pointless anyway. Who would know? Nobody would know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. I think um, I certainly, I, I was sort of, um, you know, you know, fascinated by the, 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 the presidential speech afterwards. And just to sort of compare to threads is that in sort of threads, there's, there's a sense that there's almost no sort of government left whatsoever. There's almost no structure whatsoever left. Um, and I can, in, in, in the, the day after, and you see, you know, J- Jason Robards working in a, you know, in a reasonably function sort of hospital in, in a sense, um, in threads, you see a hospital which is in a total mess. You know, like there's absolutely nothing. There's no structure going on whatsoever. Um, there's there's the scenes in their threads where where the army is trying to 
to keep some sort of order, but it's it's just not working whatsoever. You know, there's no sense of order left at all, and uh, didn't quite get that sense with the the day after. But then again, again, I think maybe one of the things that would, you know, God forbid that anything like this would ever happen. But actually, the the, the geography of the states would mean that there is some some structure left at the end of it. Um, yeah. Where does actually Britain just got pulverized by it? You know, there was, you know, there is basically nothing left afterwards, and and you know, people are uh, are actually scrambling even harder just to live. Yeah, I uh, there there was uh, still a certain amount of cooperation in this film, which I would expect. I mean, we've we've gone through some devastating things like uh, like nine uh, eleven. And uh, and we see we see that sometimes tragedies like this bring out the best in people. So I I wouldn't expect total chaos, um, but I would certainly expect things to go badly as they do. Yeah, they 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 uh, the people who at the hospital do uh, a remarkably good job in uh, in keeping some kind of order in figuring out how to commit uh, or, or perform surgery uh, with no light you know they they hang up a, a, a chandelier of sorts of flashlights uh, to uh, to point down at the at the person they're operating on uh, they they find ways, and I think if something like this happened again, God forbid, uh, I think uh, human ingenuity would uh, human ingenuity, human cooperation uh, would um, would prevail. Uh, I mean, we can be we can be terrible, terrible creatures, uh, which. I mean, just the fact that we have these nuclear weapons shows how terrible we can be. But something, something about a tragedy of this size does bring out the best in us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that's a nice place, actually, just to kind of round up on and just to end on Stephen and I. And I'm very much thinking of the final sort of scene in in um, the, the day after. So, so the Jason Robards, um, who looks awful by by this. This, this sort of time obviously it's a good few weeks afterwards and uh you know he's 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 you know helped as many people as he can and 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 so he decides he's gonna go he's gonna go home he's gonna travel back there home um so so he goes back home um and he finds what's left of his of his house i think in his in his heart he hopes his his um their wife will be there um but he's he's looking at at what's left of his home, and then he realizes that actually all that's left in his home is is the fireplace, and there's four people actually sitting, you know, next to the fireplace. They have a fire going, um, and he actually starts shouting at them. He gets angry, he says, "You know, get out of my house! You know, there's no house left," and he's uh, shouting at them. And then, you know, one of the people sitting there actually offers him some food, and he he just breaks down after that, um, and 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 then it ends with these two people just, um, um, they're sort of holding each other, uh, you know, because there really is nothing left after that. It's it's uh, it's such a powerful scene, and and I thought a really good one there just to end on. Yeah, and it. It shows you how hopeless things are going to be in this in the world of this film at least it looks like it, it really leaves you with the feeling that all hope is lost and uh, apparently that was the point of the film at the very end we get the title card that that tells us that the whole point of the film was to warn us of nuclear devastation so I guess they have to make it look as as bad as possible and they certainly did because uh Jason Robards character uh was was one of the more competent people still uh still alive and doing a lot of good but he 
uh, he gets exhausted. He seems to go a little crazy. Uh, the radiation is obviously get, getting to him because he's he's losing his hair and and he just looks terrible. Uh, so yeah, the, the 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 movie leaves us to believe that all hope will be lost after a nuclear devastation. I don't know if that would really be true, but uh, let's hope we don't find out which uh, yeah exactly. which version Which's, of uh, yeah. reality is going to happen. Let's hope we never, never, never find mm-hmm. that out. Uh huh. Um. So I just want to end end on that note. Um, if if you haven't seen the the day after it is actually available on um the YouTube, um, in quite a nice um the sort of quality um the version on there. So you know, please do give it a watch. It is it is it is worth it. It's not exactly happy sort of weekend. Um. You know, no. viewing, but I think it is it is worth watching. Um, once again, I just want to say thank you, Stephen. You're welcome. Thanks so much for having me again. I absolutely love doing this. I'm so glad you <laughs> asked me to do it. Well, I know I'm going to have you back soon, so I know we are we are working on a few different things, aren't we? So, um, oh, that'd be great. Yeah, so Stephen will be back soon. There's one person I do want to just to say thank you to, and uh, I don't actually mention them there there much. In fact, I don't really mention them much at all. But um, <laughs> so so the other half of 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 the team here. So I want to say thanks to um, their Jack. So that is Jack, their <clears throat> their Graham. That's my son. Um, Jack does all of the. Um, they're sort of editing and he gets the show ready for you so uh so thank you very much there jack and i'll be i'll i'll be sending you these files uh, very soon um but would once you again also consider, would you also consider him the producer as well as the editor yeah i would to be well that's what he says he keeps saying well i actually they produce it for you um <laughs> so so yeah he is he he is indeed so uh so, so, so there's a big thank you to Jack. Um, and as always, a big thank you there to everyone else. So thank you for um, their listening. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this episode of Cult Connections. Please like and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And we would love it if you left a review. Follow us on Twitter at Connections Cult for more fun, share your ideas, and maybe even be on the show. Thank you.